A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha, they crucified Jesus and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Welcome to the Franciscan Monastery of the Holy Land in Washington, D.C. Tonight, from our monastery church, The friars are commemorating Good Friday with the traditional burial service of Jesus, an ancient ceremony that was held earlier today in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. This ritual is a reenactment of how, after his death, the body of Jesus was taken from the cross and placed in the tomb. We begin at our replica here in the church of Calvary, the place where Jesus died. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows what he is speaking, the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced.
to the Hebrews. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it, so he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by.
thank you for praying with us this evening. We are grateful to the choir of the Magnificat School in Jerusalem for the music used in this service. This Good Friday has been different for Catholics all over the world, but the meaning of this day has not changed. Our renewal as modern day disciples of Jesus who died and rose. Good Friday is also the day when the Holy Father traditionally asked Catholics all around the world to contribute to the support of the Holy Land. That appeal has been moved to this fall, but the Franciscans and the Christians they serve have needs today and over the coming months. If you can be generous in sharing an Easter offering with us for the needs of the Holy Land and the Franciscans who serve them, we thank you. May God bless you and fill you with the joys and blessings of Easter.